In this video, we're going to do a, an indirect derivation example. So let's get started. So we'll show the conclusion. We should always make an assumption now, no matter what, because we always can make an assumption. We prefer to do assume CD if we can, and we do assume ID if we can't. We cannot do assume CD since we're not trying to show a conditional, so we'll do assume ID. And we'll bring in our premises for step three. Step four is we break apart our... Uh, we apply our inference rules. And while we're doing this, of course, we always want to be thinking about how can I box and cancel. And because we started with an indirect assumption, we're probably going to uh, box and cancel with a contradiction, with ID. Okay, so having, having split up line two, we want to see if we can do any, um, any other inference rule applications. And we can. Uh, when we look at three, we see a conditional whose antecedent is P, and we have P on line five, which lets us do modus ponens. We have, we got the Q, we can do modus ponens with Q on line four. We have not R, what can we do with not R? Well, if remember, we're always looking to box and cancel, and we know that we're probably looking to box and cancel with ID because we started with ID, not necessarily, but probably. Then we want to look for a contradiction, and we do have a contradiction. We have a contradiction between R on line six and uh, not R on line eight for ID. There we go. Now I just want to demonstrate one quick thing here, uh, that we could have done this derivation differently and gotten to actually a different contradiction. So let's say we get to, uh, we get P and R, this our simplification, and then we say, oh look, 4 is uh, a conditional, its negation is not R. Well, I have R on line 6, so I could apply double negation to line 6, giving me negation, negation R which is the negation of the consequent of line four, so I can do MT. I have negation Q, so I can do MT with three and eight. They get not P, so I can do ID, right? I can do ID with line six and seven, right? Because they contradict each other. No, they don't. Line six and seven is R and negation, negation R, so it's not line six and seven that are the contradiction, but rather five and nine, P and negation P. So, if you can get one contradiction, there are probably actually many contradictions. If you have some lines from which you can extract a contradiction using your rules, there are probably many contradictions you can extract using your rules, and any contradiction will do uh, for boxing and canceling with ID. So once we start with assume ID, uh, we want to have our eyes out for any old contradiction whatsoever, because as soon as we get it, we can box and cancel. So that's this example.